Welcome to Sunday Special. Are the Chinese J20 and J31 more advanced than the Russian T50 PAKFA? The Chinese J-20 and the Russian T-50 PAKFA or SUA-57 are equally as good to one another. Both features some areas of stealth and both have near super agility. We can assume the J-31 could have similar stealth characteristics to those of the J-20 or near close to the F-35 give the aircraft design similarity is to those of the F-35. The J-20 is huge jet. Its small movable fins and canards gives it a great agility however its key role would be to intercept jets and destroy them at long distance. It is not as agile as the SUA-57 based on the aerodynamics features as compared to the super agile SUA-57. The J-31 is speculated to use stealth coatings instead of baked in fiber mat stealth. China claimed the aircraft to be stealthy against L-band and Ku-band radars, and would be low observable against a number of multi-spectrum sensors. The engine nozzles are apparently being redesigned to reduce radar and infrared signatures. Above and below, the SU-57 is more super agile than the SU-35. This is comprised of the front canards blended into the wings, the all-moving fin and tail and thrust vectoring. In close and dog fight, the SU-57 should have an edge over the Chinese J-20 and J-31. SU-57 pilots would best employ long-range missiles, similar to the F-14 Phoenix and dogfighting is considered a last resort. In terms of stealth and RCS, both aircraft are unknown and I suspect that both have a much higher RCS than those of the F-35 and F-22 when flown. However we need to understand that once weapons bay doors are open in the F-35 and F-22, both will be detected in a few seconds on enemy radar. This would probably give way to their position when launching BVR missiles at an enemy jet. The J-20 is a bigger jet with the purpose of long-range interception. It could be agile but pitting it against the SUA-57, we have no idea of the flight characteristics. We could assume through the use of moving canards that both jets are superlative as those of their European counterparts such as the Eurofighter Typhoon, the French Rafale and the Swedish Gripen. McDonnell Douglas and NASA's X-36 featured canards and was considered to be extremely stealthy. Radar cross-section can be further reduced by controlling canard deflection through flight control software, as is done on the Eurofighter. The PLOF implicitly understands that the J-20 will be superior to its fourth-generation fighter fleet, but they have yet to fully grasp the doctrinal implications of adopting a fifth-generation fighter. They are writing how superior it the J-20 is compared to the previous generation however they bought the SU-35 and continue to produce the J-11B, J-16 and J-10C and are developing new versions of them. It is possible the J-20 has a long way to go in terms of being up to PAR with the likes of the SU-35. But in my opinion the J-20 is a very good start for the Chinese aviation industry and for the PLOF. Engine of the SU-57 have thrust vectoring with each engine producing a gigantic 39,556 pounds of thrust per engine. While the Chinese J-20 uses the Russian Saturn AL-31 as seen on the SU-27 flanker series fighters. It could be said that the new SU-57 engine called ISDALI-30 is around 25-30% lighter than those of the Russian engines on the J-20. The J-20 do not have the thrust vectoring nozzles but we can assume it should be implemented on the new Chinese engine which is the Sien WS-15. The SU-57 can carry four beyond visual range missiles in its two main weapons bays and two short range missiles in the wing root weapons bays with the primary weapons being the active radar homing K-77M, an upgraded R-77 variant with AESA seeker and conventional rear fins. The short-range missile is the infrared homing K-74M2. In the near future the SUA-57 will be equipped to carry the upgraded K-74 variant with reduced cross-section for internal carriage. For longer-ranged BVR shoot, 
the jet will carry four large ISDA Li-810 beyond visual range missiles. A similar missiles from China will also be carried in the J-20. A total of four missiles of similar caliber to the ISDA Li-810 will be carried. Current J-31 uses a modified version of the MiG-29 engine with an estimated thrust of around 19,000 pounds of thrust each. Its thirsty engines would have probably limit the range of the J-31 based on estimated fuel calculations, engine thirst, and high 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 interception radius out to about 455-50 km with limited time on station of about 15-20 minutes. The speed of the J-20 is 2,100 km per hour while the SU-57 is at 2,140 km per hour. The SU-57 should have an edge over the J-31 but could be on equal terms to the J-20. Both jets are big however the SU-27 is bigger than the SU-57. The picture above demonstrate the size of each jets. The J-20 is longer than the SU-27 and is a lot more longer than the T-50 SU-57 and F-22A. Both F-22A and T-50 have a similar plan form however the T-50 have a built-in canard that blends into the wing while the J-20 maintains a traditional layout in current fourth generation fighter similar to those of the Typhoon, Rafale, and Gripen there are few areas where the SU-57 have some advantage over the J-20 which is in the following. The new avionics suite called the Integrated Modular Avionics Combat Systems. The IMABK makes use of indigenous Russian multi-core microprocessors and a new indigenous real-time operating system. The new IMABK integrated avionics suite designed to automatically detects, identifies, and tracks the most dangerous targets and offers the pilot the best solution to engage an enemy. The new system takes control of almost all of the key sensors of the aircraft radar, navigation, and communication. The advanced research projects FPI, will have an aircraft structural monitoring system based on the principles of operation of living organisms nervous system designed to improve flight safety. The information about aircraft's condition will be transmitted via laser beam through the optical fiber woven into the structure. It will decrease aircraft's maintenance cost by eliminating expensive scheduled examinations thus improving flight safety. All three jets will have advanced cockpit displays and great ergonomics. All will be equipped with optical displays to enhance pilots' awareness as well as technology to detect enemy jets. However the pilot in the SU-57 will have their own oxygen-making system with unlimited supply. We have no idea about what oxygen system installed in both Chinese jets but we could assume there is some form of oxygen-generating system on board. To summarize which three of these fighters are better, is premature as all three are still in the stages of going into production. We have no idea about what the Chinese systems are in their J-20 and J-31 and we have some ideas of the SU-57 but as any military intelligence out there understands that what is in the media and internet is just a small amount of data that the respective manufacturers expects us to believe. There could be areas that the jets could perform below PAR to current fourth generation fighters such as quality, agility, and weapon systems. The speculations I put in is assessing the potential agility as well as the weapons they employ that could give us the idea about how agile they are and what sort of weapons they are employing. With the Russian SU-57, it has been noted that it will use a long-range air-to-air missile of a size that only four of those missiles can be carried internally as compared to six R-77 missiles. So in my analysis, they could have a radar detection range far greater than 150 km, possibly in the region of 200-250 km and a IRST tracking and weapons firing range of about 60-100 km given the R-77 could be slaved to the IRST for a stealthy approach. Could this be applied to the J-20? It could and it could also too with the J-31. We could see both jets having an indigenous Chinese-made IRST copied probably from the Su-27 and Su-35 jets.